Hi guys, welcome to another video. The adventure is here, finally. I was hoping for a dry one, but it's gonna look like a very, very wet journey, this one. Five days bike packing in France. So I'm just on my way to Paul Ferry now to get the uh, ferry to Cherbourg, and then cruising the Normandy coast. So enjoy. Here's the rig all in its beauty. Tail fin rack is always on the back. Got my sleep mat underneath, the foil close cell foam. A couple of water bottles there. Restrap large frame bag and just bungee strapped a dry bag on the front here. It's pretty good, I think. A little bit of clearance, as you can see, really tightly strapped on so it shouldn't go anywhere. Windy, but I think with a bit of a bonus, got a big old tailwind, so that should be nice. Yeah, let's get through passport control and get on the road. The so nice, we're out, out of the ferry port, and it's dry. I was expecting thunderstorms now. I think there's some due soon, so we're going to get some mileage done. Uh, it's very nice of the French to lay this tarmac path out for me. Brand new tarmac super fast nice tailwind which is amazing and this is a national cycle network which goes straight from the ferry almost all the way to Khan apparently so should be some easy trails but yeah keep my eyes out try not to go on the wrong side of the road and soon get some food in me. I just had a, an oat bar because I haven't eaten since breakfast and it is half past two now. So get some miles under then maybe grab some lunch somewhere and see how it goes. So let's knock out some miles. jacket off boiling this 19 degrees it is about 20 mile an hour tailwind on the coast road so I do not need this jacket for now it's sunny it was supposed to be pouring down but good at the minute so yeah just pulled over get the jacket off strap it up to the outside of my bag and then Donning out the lycra, look, woohoo! And then if rain looks like a set and look, I just pull over and whack it on because this is my Hope mountain bike Royal waterproof jacket. So fits on over the top, massive hood on, which is great for uh, putting over your helmet as well. So I don't have to take my helmet off to wear it, which is really ideal for me because. Always wear your helmet, kids. Always wear your helmet. Always. No matter how slow, no matter where you're going, the slightest little incident on your head, boom. On there. Done. Nice, Sybil. Still got my shorts that I was wearing on the ferry over my bibs. But yeah, good. Oh. Damn cars making all that noise. Yeah, as you can see, nice and in line. Lovely. Tail fin coming good. Right, sun's out, as I said before, let's bang the mileage out and get down the coast.
Saint Pierre l'Église. Bonjour. Lovely so far, just left St. Pierre l'Eglise. Uh, lovely little town. I love the little French towns which you just come across, like in the middle of nowhere, old stone buildings. Sorry about the wind if there's a bit of wind here. Oui. Bonjour. Obviously, fluent in French. Uh, bonjour, ça va bien, je vous un baguette. Pretty, oh, I can move it. Pretty fluent. Je m'appelle Nathan, on it, yeah, on a nice coastal road we've gone all the way around from Cherbourg through to St Pierre l'Eglise, now we're going to work our way down to across, I was going to consider going to Barfleur, I think I'm going to cut across the countryside, stick to some really back roads, soak up. The beautiful weather, it was supposed to be thunderstorms, but it's not today. Not yet anyway. So if this holds out till I get to camp, it can pour it down once I get there, I don't care. Because I love falling asleep to the rain. But yeah, let's make our way to Utah Beach. And then I'll decide kind of what time I get there. Do I camp somewhere around there? Or carry on to Omaha? But yeah, let's. Go soak up some countryside. It's beautiful. bit of a sweat on. Last 10 miles has been a bit of a big heavy crosswind so it's felt like a, a big headwind. Um, about 40 mile an hour apparently at the minute gusting but 25 mile an hour just constant so when it's a tailwind it's beautiful. Yeah just come onto this gravel track as you can see behind me but yeah you can see all that in the distance like all the defences just over there there's one off in the distance don't know if you, you can see it just there there's one as well but yeah so basically right on the beach here because as you can see the beach is just there if you can see it the tractors out there so i'm guessing they're oh they're probably mussel farming i should imagine or something like that oysters possibly yeah it looks like there's loads out there. The tide's right out at the minute, so the beach is massive. But yeah, I'm gonna make it onto the next town, see if we can get a little bit of a snack and then make our way to camp. Beach. Don't know if you can see the rainbow there, just out of sea. A little bit of a shower out there. Fortress to the left of it. Yeah. Just heading to Utah Beach now. We're about 10k away. Nice and smooth road just following the sea but as you can see 
from and probably here to be fair from the wind the flags are howling as a crosswind so that'll be nice when I go around the peninsula get up to head on north to Omaha because at the minute it looks like it's a kind of a southwesterly so that should pull me up around the coastline at a rapid speed but yeah let's head to Utah down here you can see a lookout point I've left my bike just at the monument should be fine no one really around don't think it's the biggest thieves spot right this way yeah I'll tell you what these sandals are doing good Good to ride in, feet are nice and aired, and really, really comfortable. Really comfortable. I bought them solely because of, as I previously mentioned, that the weather was due to absolutely pour down. I have storms for the first two days of this ride, but it's been quite sunny. There's a big cloud coming in the distance just up here, but if that dumps it down, I'll just take shelter for. 10 minutes where it passes and go but yeah it's quite eerie with these buildings here I've never been to these beaches before this is about two and a half k before Utah so this is like the start of it but that one's as you can see is just snapped away broken off and Here's one of the lookouts, I'm sure you could get in, but it's full up of sand as the wind would have blown it all in. Yeah. So, just in an eerie place because of what obviously went on here, and no one really would wish to happen again, and hope it doesn't, obviously. But yeah, these are the first line defences of D Day. As you can see, there's more just further down there, just there. I actually get up on top of this. Ooh. Well, I try and get up on top of it. There we go. broken off and just collapsed. This is quite similar but if you look out straight over the edge. Built into the dune. The dune's obviously built up now and really encompassed it. But they're obviously everywhere look all the defences. This is where it all starts really the sum out buried in the sand pointed out before I'm not entirely sure you can make it out but just up there there's a defense out at sea I'll find out what that is and I'll put that try to put the name over if I remember up on the screen if it's there 
You're welcome. Much needed refreshment. Oh yes, cheeky Snickers just to smash down and um, raspberry jaffa cakes. So yeah, I'll take that. It was much needed water as well here because I was out of water. Um, I'm just coming up to. It was much needed water. I'm just coming up to uh, or towards Karen Town, um, and then I've probably got. I think another 10 to 15 miles to do before sunset. Maybe 10, I could pull over anywhere though. I'm not camping at a site. I'm literally just gonna, wherever I find a flat spot behind a hedge, I'm there, I'm in it. So let's eat this, go over to the churchyard, I think, go sit on the bench and let's go and eat this. So yes, yeah, so I just sat down in the churchyard. Uh, this is saint marie de mont and it's a lovely little old, Lovely little old town. Pisseries everywhere, a couple of boulangeries, a couple of bars, restaurants. That's the big church I would have shown you as I rode around it as I came in. Yeah, and a wonderful bike. It's a beauty, it's gone really well. Uh, dry bag's a little bit bigger than what I wanted uh, on the front, but I've got everything in there. I've literally got that is the camping stuff, so all the stove cup all my sleeping gear um so i've got the tent sleeping bag um air pad and all my clothes all the sleeping clothes in there so it's a fully dry bag so i wanted everything in there that was going to basically be going to bed with so it's never going to get wet no matter what the tail fin is waterproof um, as well but just in case there's any sort of like crease got in there because it's right on the back wheel so a lot of spray if it was going to be pouring down but I've there was a bit of rain earlier on only for about two or three minutes just one cloud came over and I caught the edge of it but I could see it coming so I kind of pushed on a little bit I was going to stop at a place for a little bite to eat but I saw the black cloud coming so I thought I kind of outrun it because it was coming across and luckily I just got ahead of it so yeah, just gonna eat these little snacks now. Topped up with water, have the Orangina. I love Orangina. Um, and then make my way on. And it's time to find a field, hedge, anywhere really. 
and just camp. But yeah, just gonna ride, I think, because it only takes probably about 15 minutes to fully set up everything, the tent, the sleeping bed, everything like that. And then once it's done, stick my food on. Then probably have an early night tonight, I think, because I had a very early start this morning. I woke up at about quarter five, just to make sure I didn't miss the ferry at all, so I didn't book one, which I could change the times. Um, and just chatting to a lovely couple on there. Ferry is really, really nice. Um, from up in the Lake District. Um, I spoke to him, where is it? Uh, Kirkby Lonsdale. They've come down. So they've driven down, come over the Paul Sherberg Ferry, and they're doing a tour all through France, Spain, Sardinia, going into Italy, back up through Switzerland, um, coming back and then going to see um, the chap's family in Essex on the way back through. So they, instead of coming back to Sherbrooke, they're going back to Calais to go to Dover, through Dartford, go to Essex, back to see uh, some of his family, and then go back up to the Lake District. So, nice big journey that, but yeah, let's get this done. Oh, sun's come out, it feels lovely on the face. I think I found the spot for the night. Uh, I was going to carry on for about 10 more miles and kind of get round the coast on the way to Omaha Beach, but I thought there was no point pushing it. It looks like there's a lot of dark clouds coming in. Um, as you can kind of see up there, so there was literally no clouds at all half an hour ago and they're coming in. The wind's supposed to be about 40 mile an hour gusting. Tonight you can hear them whistling in the trees going. So if it comes in, it's going to come in fast. So I've decided to pull up next to the river actually, you can see the river through there, the bridge, main road's only there, but the, wi the wind's blowing the opposite way. So uh, no real noise in there, it's not a very busy road at all, but I'm going to pitch the tent just here, next to it, I can store my bike underneath this shelter, so it's out the rain if it does absolutely dump down. And. I uh, didn't bring a chair on this trip because I thought I'm not going to bother extra st extra storage really extra weight everything I was like and I wasn't really going to gain much because when I finished the days really um, going to cook food and then just go to bed and probably get some long night sleep um, which I don't ever get home so I tend to stay up <laughs> watch a bit of TV or or with a dog or with a missus and end up staying up too late watch too many youtube videos um so yeah so as you can see you've got plenty of benches to choose from got all my kit here all the bikes nice and safe here which i'll just strap to one of the benches i think i'll lean it up against it and i got a little like semi lock which i'll strap to it and yeah pitch the tent there and then i'll just get into it once i've cooked the food and yeah just go to bed I think but I won't pitch the tent yet because it is still quite light it's only going to take me 10 minutes to pitch it really once I've got everything done and my food done I'm gonna, but I'm going to get changed here so I'm going to hide behind this shack I was hoping these toilets were actually open but they're locked um, I think they're only open at the minute from September it says down a sign down there the little uh, snack and grill bar on the river and boats is only open Saturdays so I'm guessing this only opens there, they're fully locked. But that would have been handy to be able to use the toilet as well here. Otherwise, I think tomorrow, um, I'm only about three kilometers away from a reasonably big sized town. So once I've had breakfast tomorrow, I'll go and find a coffee shop, get a really nice coffee. Uh, just fresh it up and just charge everything, make sure everything's boosted again. Um, I do have my anchor power bank, but get everything topped up, get the anchor power bank topped back up again because it'll be mains and yeah, just have a nice coffee, maybe a patisserie. Can't come to France and not have a lovely cake. Best cakes in the world. Yeah, let's get a bit of food on, get changed. Yeah, so I've got the meal here. Penny bolognese with parmesan from Adventure Menus. Uh, one of the meals that was obviously, well, all the meals were gifted from Basecamp Food. Uh, this is one of the smaller meals because I'm not overly 
hungry, I would say. Uh, I had a good few snacks back at the last town, which like I showed you the raspberry Jaffa cake, Snickers, Orangina, um, and I've had an oat bar as well. So this should do me for tonight. I'll obviously be having breakfast as well here um, tomorrow morning, and then I'll be shooting into a town to go and grab a coffee or something like that. So don't need don't need one of my bigger meals because there's a couple of the fire pots which are massive. They have. I think one of them is nearly 800 calories in a meal, so that'll be on a day where I think I'm probably pushing into a headwind or something like that, so yeah, let's get this on. I don't even think I need it turned up that much. These the so so wind masks are so so efficient. We turn it on a really low flame and that is covering the whole base of the flame. Um yeah, unbelievably efficient. Obviously in the titanium pot transfers heat really well. It doesn't doesn't hold heat very well, but transfers it pretty well because it's very, very thin. So let's get that one, see how long that takes to go. It'll probably only take two, three minutes. I've put a put on way more water than what I need. Uh, but I'll probably have hot chocolate after as well, so yeah Looking forward to this not like I said not overly hungry, but I've burnt the calories there So I definitely need them inside me Board already four minutes and that was how much What's the marking 300 600 about 600 mil, so loads of water. Takes no time at all. This Soto Windmaster is honestly in a different league. It just, instead of it going on one concentrated little spot, it just burns like a nice burn around. So you have to have it on such a low heat. Otherwise it is really coming up and around the pot if you want to do it that much. It's great for running it pan cooking, but warming up water. I had it on one of the lowest settings I could do before it was going out. It was four minutes, I'd just done 600 mil. Bargain. So let's get the water in there. Up to fill line. Looks like a lot of water in this, but there looks like there's also quite a lot of powder. I've never had one of these adventure menu foods before. So we'll see what it's like. I'll certainly let you know. Well, I'll give it a good old stir. There's a lot of dust at the bottom of this. It's all there's a lot of the sauce and the parmesan all at the bottom. Yeah, I wanna give it a good stir with the good old trusty Wild Camping International titanium spork. Comes everywhere with me, nice and lightweight. Bottle open on one end, spork, covers everything. Don't need a fork, don't need a spoon, you've got your spork and a bottle opener. Happy days. Right. Let's get that sealed up. And my own little hot water bottle that can go inside the jacket. Not that it's actually that cold. Probably looking at, I think I'm looking at about 16, 17 degrees. When I rocked up on the bike, the Wahoo was saying 17 degrees. So, sun's gone down now, but yeah, that wasn't really in the sun anyway, so it's, it doesn't feel much colder than that, but let's get it inside the jacket, definitely, for sure. Oh, toasty. Toasty, toasty. Yeah, leave that for eight, nine minutes, maybe. I didn't actually read the packet, but yeah, they're nearly all like that, so 
doesn't really matter, I could leave it for 15 minutes, it, it'll still be boiling anyway inside there, so. And then, time to eat. It's getting quite dark. Obviously it's a lot darker on this. Uh, GoPros aren't amazing in light, um, but there's still plenty of light for my eye. I think we've got about another 40 minutes of daylight, really. Like the sun has gone down, but still quite light in there. There's clouds are howling on by but there's a few breaks in it so there's still a decent amount of light so i think the next time i'll have you back i'll probably have to have the torch on there so oh that's really warm on the tummy let's get it out the jersey jersey coat Lovely. as you can see the light's much much better with the light on so you can actually see me a bit better now so it's definitely dropped in the last 15 minutes i let that stand for about 12 minutes um yeah, 15 minutes, it's gone from being like pretty good daylight to not very much at all. Um, but yeah, I don't know, you probably won't be able to see that, but... Certainly got some good pasta in it. Not better to see, as you can see, some good pasta. Got chunks of carrots, beef, and it's certainly cheesy there. The only thing I would say actually, because it's got all that parmesan mixed into it, it's sticking to the spoon a lot. Like. So getting it off of it is, I'm gonna have to properly clean it rather than just like licking it clean or wiping it down after. I actually have to give it a bit of a scrub, but see what it tastes like. Oh, oh that's hot. Yeah, nice chunks, good, good onion in it, little chunks of carrot, like a bit of ground beef, uh, long pieces of penne, so it's nice. Mm. Yeah, pretty good. I'll certainly, if you're going to get this, the Adventure Menu Penny Bellognaise, there's a line inside which says big portion and standard portion. The big portion, obviously, it's not going to make the pasta anymore. It's just going to give you more liquid, really. So if, obviously, you want more liquid in your hot drink and a hot meal, it's probably good for that. But I would just say make it a bit thicker use the standard portion so if you are going to get this meal use the standard portion it'll be a much thicker sauce i've done it like in between on the bigger and it's a little bit more watery than what i would want but i'm going to just drink the remains of it anyway um be a, it's like having a hot drink anyway so that'd be nice yeah flavors there never had one of these before but they're it's pretty good Pasta's cooked nicely, nice and tomatoey. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this now without being blinded by the light. Um, I'm gonna decide whether I just sleep on this bench tonight, because I'll be off the ground. I'll put my foam mat underneath me and perhaps just my sleeping bag, and that's it. I don't know even if I'll put the tent up tonight. I can pop it up nice and easily even if I need to but because I'm under this shelter it'll probably be quite nice because I think tonight's only getting down to 13, 14 degrees and I've got my three season bag, the Van Gogh Cobra 400 and I've been down in that in minus five before and it was fine. So if anything, it'll probably be a little bit toasty but because there's a little breeze coming through but it's more coming this way and there's a great big tree just behind the camera there so it's kind of blocking it completely here whereas if I go to the end of the table you can feel it over there um so yeah this table's plenty wide enough I think I could just put my sleep pad down foam mat underneath it just to give it a little bit of insulation go to bed put my pillow inside and go to sleep it's nice I prefer sleeping under the stars anywhere as much as the tent is nice it's kind of if you don't need it why would you want to be cooped up inside it um might check the weather report just to see if it is absolutely going to tank down. But even if it does, there'd have to be a lot of dampness in the air to affect my down bag. But I'm right underneath this shelter, so that's the only way it would be if it got really damp and humid in the air where it soaked it up. But tomorrow, regardless, I'm going to be in the tent anyway because I think I'm just going to pitch on one of the beaches um, tomorrow or when I go back towards the beach again a little bit more you actually find that there's loads of little parking bays with just grass areas, nice gravel bits and grass areas. So it's, France is literally made up for touring. So 
if you're going to come and do the Normandy beaches, as a great spot, completely free camping, pan flat grass, uh, Utah beaches. So if you come to like the Utah Memorial Center, come out of it as if you're going out of town and going almost dead south, which is the main road, which pretty much is the only road out of there. Um, on your left, about 200 yards up on there, is completely pan flat grass, huge trees all around, and there's a, there's a big hedge, probably about 20 feet tall, so you really sheltered from all the wind. And lots of camper vans were in there, but they're all spaced out really nicely, so you could go and pitch your tent in there, no problem. So if you are thinking about it, that's a handy little hint. So I'm gonna enjoy this now, and I'll be back with you soon. That was delicious. Yeah, really delicious. Um, highly recommend that meal, but like I said, fill it up to the standard weight. Adventure menus, penny bolognese with parmesan. Good meal. Nothing too big. I think it says it's a little over 400 calories. So it's not a massive meal. Um, it's a decent size, whereas, like I said, some of the others, nearly 800 calories, that is massive. So I need to save those for the days I'm gonna crank out the biggest mileage. Possibly even the day when I ride back to Sherbrooke, because potentially that might be the last day my biggest. Or if I'm into a massive headwind, I might be starving on that. And saves me buying loads of food on the ferry, obviously. Which is extortionate. And not very good either. A bit sweaty and being cooked and just sat on a hot counter for a while. So as much as these aren't like the best meals you could ever have, um, in the world, not like home cooking or something, they're, they're pretty damn good. And um, because you've just freshly cooked it, the pasta tastes exactly the same as if I boiled it at home. The sauce was tasty, had herbs, parmesan, everything in it. Really quite good actually. But yeah, the, luckily where I am, there's a nice bin there as well, so I can get rid of all the rubbish that I've had today. I'll throw nearly everything in there already, but I'll throw this in there. I'm gonna have a hot chocolate. And then I think I'm gonna get my head down. I was gonna pitch the tent, but I'm gonna sleep like a hobo. Um, I'm actually gonna sleep on this bench right here. Um, it's long, it's probably 20 foot long, um, but it's wide, I'd probably say it's uh, two and a half feet wide, so it's wider than my sleeping pad anyway. Um, and I'll be comfortable on it anyway, it's really it's completely pound flat. I thought there was someone there then, there must be a branch or something. Um, it's completely pan flat, I'm reasonably sheltered from the wind here. I'm very well sheltered from the, the rain, so yeah. This is the one. Saves unpacking the tent, getting it all away tomorrow morning. Be a really quick pack up and go when I want to. But I won't even be that hurried because I won't have to pack away a wet tent or anything like that. It's just it's still in the dry bag now, hasn't moved. And then I'll just make my way to a coffee shop and hopefully get some amazing cakes. So here's the trusty steed. Got me all the way here. Most of the stuff's unpacked, but as I said, I was deciding between sleeping in the tent or on the bench, and I'm going for the bench. So, nice wide bench. I've got a silver foil mat, close cell foam underneath. Got my four class 700 pad nice and long i put my microfiber tail over it just a little bit of extra insulation and i've got the van gogh cobra 400 down sleeping bags that's lofting up and my trekology aleph deluxe pillow that's really comfy yeah i think i'll be going to bed very very shortly um let the down bags loft up a little bit more and then just get into it so i've eaten all the food had a drink Put all the stuff away in my dry bags in the tail fin rack and just left the stove out water ready for have a quick coffee in the morning yep, boil up some water for breakfast porridge and then get on my way to the town don't know which town i pick maybe the one that's just down the road we'll see see what time we wake up because if we wake up really early i might even crack on and see how far we can get and then stop and do all my bits that i need to do in a coffee shop at lunchtime so got plenty of water plenty of drink so options 
So I'm glad I picked up all that water, picked up three litres of water and filled up my bottles, carried one and a half litre here and I've used half of that so I'll probably use a chunk of that in the morning. My bottles on my bike will still be full so that will keep me going for a good three, four hours. Tomorrow I just cruise in. Hopefully it's dry again. That would be amazing if it's dry. If it's wet, it is what it is but there'd be a bit of a sad face getting up in the morning or a bit unenthusiastic. So, good night guys. Thanks for watching guys, part two coming very soon. If you don't already, please subscribe and you'll get notified of the next video. Thanks.